So power rankings for week 17. Uh, there's a few interesting changes here and a few teams which are kind of steady as she goes. Uh, I'll go through them, explain a bit of the reasoning, and then uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comments. 15. Kind of never thought this day would come. But the Sunwolves are no longer 15th. That honor is now with the Reds. Um, I was pretty surprised when I saw this myself. Uh, but... Um, yeah, if, if I look at these two teams' kind of performances, some Wolves are in 14, so it's not a huge shift for them, up one. Uh, since week six, the Reds have had one win. In that same time, the Sun Wolves have had three. I guess this was bound to come eventually if the Sun Wolves managed to pick up more wins and the Reds didn't manage to pick up any of their own. So, um... Yeah, I'm still kind of a believer in what Brad Thorne's doing uh, with that young squad in Queensland. It's just a matter of getting some consistency from that squad. They've pushed a few teams hard, but ultimately have come up short most weeks. So um, I'm still prepared to give him some, some time. And um, yeah, good on the Sunwolves for getting another win. Uh, next, and still the same despite their recent victory, is the Blues. So... I mean, they're only one win ahead of the Sun Wolves, so it's not exactly a great season, despite the fact that they're not in bottom place. Uh, the fact that they're where they are is um, a pretty bad indictment of where this Blues season has gone. They've still got two games left to um, away games, which is not always easy for them, against the Hurricanes and the Crusaders, so it's probably not going to get very pretty, but... Um, hey, at least they sent Jerome Kaino off with a win in his, uh, his last game. Uh, next, uh, the Stormers, another team whose season has just not really, not really happened. I mean, at Newlands, it's not too bad. It's five wins from seven games, but away from home, it's it's nothing much to talk about. So, um, hopefully, they still get a good crowd. It's a bit sad for them because they're one of the best supported teams in terms of attendance. Uh, and like I said, five out of seven, they they do tend to put on a good show for the team when they're at home. But their away form has just really let them down uh, this season. Uh, in 11th and down one spot uh, are the Bulls. So their win loss record is now five wins, nine losses. Um, they've got one more home game, uh, but they've lost five of their last six. So uh, at a time when they put themselves in a position to kind of push for the playoffs, one win from six has just kind of seen that slip from their fingers. Uh, similar to the Reds, you've got to hope that John Mitchell's building something, um, but it's just a pity that that kind of gloss has been taken off things with uh, kind of recent performances, with that loss in Singapore being a particular low point. Uh, next, up one is the Brumbies, who are actually on a fairly decent run of form. Uh, they've won three of their last four, which I think nobody expected. I had them down in the bottom row of this power rankings uh, not that long ago, but um, maybe the coach is finally starting to implement his own game plan. He, he's switching the team around. If nothing else, this bodes well for next season that he's... Um, I mean, you can't, you kind of give the, the coaches a... Uh, uh, not a pass, but at least a bit of an easier run for that first, uh, first season as they kind of embed their own tactics and... Um, you know, get the players they want, so hopefully going forward we can see more from the Brumbies. Uh, next, and this is where it starts to get kind of same-same, uh, the Rebels. So, I mean, the Rebels, when you look at their their record, seven wins, seven losses, it's, it's a heck of a lot better than last season. Uh, but they, they've got a tendency of beating lower-ranked teams. I mean, they've beaten the Brumbies, the Sunwolves, the Blues, teams like that. Uh, but they struggle against the big boys. So if they are going to be in a playoff position, which is not guaranteed, um, come the end of the season, and if they finish in eighth and have to go to Christchurch, it could get pretty messy. But um, obviously, improvement from last season, but we'll need to see them kind of up their game against the, the big boys. Uh, next, another team which is same-same is the Sharks. So they had a good win over the Lions. Their record's now six wins, seven losses, and a draw. Uh, they, they can't 
kind of get any consistency with their game, which is going to be a common theme of some of these teams. I mean, they beat the Highlanders, lost to the Bulls. Beat the Chiefs, lost to the Jaguars. Beat the Lions. Does that mean they'll lose their next game? I don't know, but uh, at least in a game where they, they had to win to save their season, they managed to do it. We'll see if they can kind of put two results together uh, for the next one. Uh, the second from top row sees the Lions stick in seventh, so no changes there. Their record is a pretty disappointing eight wins, seven losses. Uh, the longest winning streak they've gone on this season is three wins, which for the Lions of last year seems kind of unthinkable. Uh, they have had some key players out, of course. Uh, they've won two of their last five, so it's not been uh, overly startling. But um, they're still up the top of the table in terms of the South African Conference, but uh, the Jaguars are coming for them. Um, thankfully for the Lions, the two Jaguars' last games are away, so we'll see if they're able to capitalize or not. Uh, next, in sixth, another team not moving is the Waratahs. Waratahs are 100% against Aussie opposition, so they're kind of entitled to be top of that Aussie conference if they're beating all comers. Where they struggle is against non-Aussie teams. They've only beaten one, one South African team and one New Zealand team this season, and they've had one draw against a South African team, so uh, come finals time, you're definitely going to have to play uh, non-Aussie opposition. Whether they can get that over the line is, uh, is going to be their biggest challenge. Uh, next, in fifth, despite a good win, is the Chiefs, which puts the Chiefs below the Highlanders, and after that last result, you're thinking that can't be possible. But, I mean, Chiefs record nine wins, five losses is pretty nice looking, but if you look at their last eight results, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. It's hard to bump up a team higher than that uh, with a record like that. They need to string wins together. Uh, they've only got two games left, um, home games, so we'll see if they can kind of put in a good push at the end of the season to, to bump themselves as high up the table as they can and perhaps challenge for fourth. Uh, in fourth on my power rankings is the Highlanders. <coughs> Obviously dealt to by uh, the Chiefs in that last game in Fiji. Their record is the same of 9-5-0. Um, of and 0. These guys are down one, by the way. I had them in third last time. Uh, they've won three of their last five, which is, um, which is okay. But uh, dropping that home game against the Chiefs, home game uh, in Fiji, it looks to be costly given that they've got the Crusaders away uh, in the coming week. Uh, next, and also down one, Hurricanes. Hurricanes record is 10-4-0. There was a time when it was 10-1-0. But they've dropped three on the bounce and they've dropped one on my power rankings uh, down from second. It looked for all money a few weeks ago like it was going to be a Crusaders-Hurricanes final. Now it's really hard to say because, uh, I mean, obviously the Hurricanes in their last game had Bowden Barrett out, Savia, Adi Savia out and um, some other guys as well. So... Not easy times, but uh, they've still got two weeks to get things back on track. And they've got a big game against the Chiefs uh, coming up as well, which is going to be massive. In second and up two spots are the Jaguares, which is a massive turnaround from the start of the season where they were at the bottom of my board. Uh, they've won seven games in a row. Other teams, including these New Zealand teams, can only look at that record with envy. Seven games in a row is huge. Uh, their record is now nine wins, five losses. They have a chance to get a home, uh, a home final if they, if they win their remaining games. But like I said, two away games is not going to be easy. So we'll see how they go. Um, yeah, it's all to play for for them. If nothing else, they should make the playoffs, which would be great for Super Rugby. But uh, yeah, we'll see how things go going forward. And lastly, no change for the Crusaders, who even on a bye, retain that top spot. Their record is 12 wins and 2 losses, which is, you know, 2 fewer losses than anyone else uh, in the comp. So, clearly the best team at the moment. We'll see how they go returning uh, from the June tests. I guess having a bye after the June tests is a good time for them to kind of settle back into Super Rugby. So, yeah, 2 games for them, and they are looking like the team to beat at the moment. So yeah, that's the power rankings. Some Wolves off 15th 
is a pretty massive shift. Uh, and a few other teams shuffling around. Haguara is all the way up to second, also very cool. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts on the rankings, uh, who you think is too high, who you think is too low, and uh, how you, thinks, how you think uh, things are going to pan out for the rest of the season. New microphone is on the way. I have ordered that yesterday, so hopefully I won't have to sit quite this close in future. But um, yeah, we'll see how things go. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. See you later.